Hi there, I'm Mike. And I'm Chris. Today we're going to show you how you can wirelessly transfer a signal over 1.8 kilometers with HC12. We're very excited to share these results with you. And at the end of the video, we have a non-sponsored giveaway. Stay tuned. The HC12 is perhaps the easiest way to transfer data over the air between two Arduinos. Just hook up the RX and the TX pins and you're ready to go. The HC12 does all the transferring and receiving for you. We use this little device from mailbox sensors, peer sensors and door sensors. So we never experienced any range problem with it since we use it for short distances. But then we saw some comments from our viewers that people were struggling with range. And after a quick Google search we found out that lots of people were struggling to get a decent range. So we decided to order a lot of different antennas and more HD12 modules to test it out. After waiting for several weeks, all the antennas had arrived and so had all the HD12 modules. All that was left was to solder everything up and build some kind of rig so we can receive multiple signals at once. A version of the documentation claims that it's possible to reach 1800 meters. So not to have to walk back and forth too many times, we used one HD12 as the sender and set up five HD12 with different antennas at the receiver end. With lots of confidence, we went out to do a field test. Unfortunately, this was the hottest day of the year, but a little bit of heat was not gonna stop us. We found a field with a clear line of sight of about 1800 meters. Chris was gonna bike with a sender while I was gonna monitor the HD12 modules. As long as all the LEDs lit up, the sender had successfully delivered its message. So I got on the bike and started to pedal very slowly. After just a few seconds, I heard Mike on the phones telling me to stop. I was only about 50 meters away from the starting point, and all the transceivers had lost the signal. On his way back, all the receivers regained their signal. At this point, we were a bit confused. We tried redoing the test with a different sender, but the results remained the same. Then we decided to move to a different location, just to be sure there was no external factors blocking the signal. But the results didn't improve, so we started to test everything. We tried switching the senders, we tried switching the antennas, we tried only using one receiver at a time, and we tried to isolate the circuits. Nothing helped. With nothing more to try, we decided to head back, very disappointed. Although we're not a big YouTube channel, we did not want to disappoint our viewers with this defeat. So we started the hunt for the original documentation, and also started translating as much as we could off of the hgo1.com website. Since in theory, it really should not be a problem reaching 2 kilometers at the 433 MHz band. Then we got the idea to buy the HG12 directly from the hc01.com website. Just a few days ago, the new HG12 modules arrived, and even with a little cute paper receipt. If we have a look at the original HG12 and one of the other brands we previously bought, we can see that the boards are not identical. The pinout and the antenna connections are the same. The microcontroller are definitely different. This causes the PCB to have a different layout as well. The transceiver modules are also different. On the original HD12, there's a 4438-2A chip. And there are also other components that are different as well. Also we noted when connecting the non-original HD12 modules to a power bank, the power bank shut down after just a few seconds because the load was too low. But when we in the same setup changed the HD12 module to the original one, the power bank did not shut down. The load must therefore be higher with this module. This gave us hope that this experiment would not be a total failure after all. Because at this point we had promised our viewers that we would do this test. And we invested a lot in HD12 modules, antennas and even more Arduino nanos. <coughs> so with restored faith we decided to go out and do the field test all over again. This time with the new modules. This is what the sender looks like. We added a big capacitor before the recommended diode on the power of the HD12. After the diode, we added one small capacitor and one ceramic capacitor, just to be sure that there would be a minimum drop in supply power. 
We use the same setup for the previous test as well, we just changed the HG12. And a very important fact is that due to local regulations, we had to reduce the power to around 10 milliwatts. So whatever results we're going to achieve, you can probably do better if you're allowed to use the full 100 milliwatt transmit power. But remember that the 433 megahertz band is a busy band with lots of devices running on it, so don't use more transmit power than necessarily. Back in the field, it was yet another sunny day. We were ready for a new test with hopefully better results. So we started off by doing a quick bike test. It quickly became clear that this was not going to be a new 50 meters range test. We decided to walk instead to get a more reliable result. Mike started the walk with just a spring antenna on the sender. It wasn't until 311 meters that the spring antenna on the receiver started missing a few signals every now and then. So Mike kept on walking and walking. At this point we were passing about 500 meters. So we started to get really excited when the HD12 was still receiving, although we lost visual contact. The line of sight was still intact though. It was not until we reached about 700 meters that the spring antenna started to lose more signals. And at about 784 meters we determined that this was the maximum range we would use the spring antenna for. At the 1K mark, the biggest antenna had also reached its maximum range. It goes to show that bigger is not always better. At 1137 meters, antenna 1 was also out of the test. And at a tie, antenna 2 and 4 was the winners receiving signals from 1175 meters away. All this was achieved with just using the spring antenna on the sender. Now we passed the 1K mark, so we decided to use the best performing antenna on the sender as well. Contact! With this antenna on both the sender and receiver, Mike kept on walking. At 1.76 kilometers, we were in out of free line of sight. So the signal dropped. That's about 1.8K promised in the data sheet. We, we made, made it. it! There are two important things to note about this test. Number one, we did use the FU4 mode. But as mentioned, we did not use full power. If you want to learn how to set up your HD12 module, see a link to that video in the description. Number two, this test was done only 1.5 meters above ground. As you might know, by placing the antenna higher above ground, you give more signals a chance to reach the receiver. So, we did one final test. We found two elevated positions, 2.2 kilometers apart, with a free line of sight. On these points, we mounted antennas about 2 meters above ground. And to our amazement, when using the spring antenna on the sender, most of the receiving antennas had full contact again. At this range, one can only speculate what could be achieved at full transmit power. We're excited to share these findings with everybody. So we want to do a giveaway of two HC12 modules to three winners. This is not sponsored, we just want to share with the maker community. We'll pick one winner that left a comment on this video within the first 24 hours. Then we're going to pick one additional winner within one week and finally the last winner within one month. Since we are a small channel, the odds of winning are quite high. And we would love it if you tell us about the project you want to build using these modules. We're going to reply to the comments to tell you who's won. Remember, Remember to, to like, like and subscribe. See, See you, you later. later.